Hi guys, this is Tracy from Lavinia Stamps and thank you for joining me for a tutorial today. We are going to make this tag here. And that's using some of our steampunk stamps and some of our stickers, our steampunk stickers. Uh, we've also got our mystical sprays and that's we're going to use these to create the background. So a number of different things. However, we have just launched one of our new products, the grey board. And this goes really, really nicely with all our steampunk collection. So I've got some numbers here. We've got a number of different cogs. We've got some nice clocks. So these are fab when you actually paint them up and they're great add-ons for your cards or your tags, mixed media. They work so nicely together and I've had so much fun actually painting these. So initially I painted them with the primer and then I added some colour and I think you can use anything that you want, anything that you've got in your craft stash. I use some of the metallic gilding polish and also the glitter one, the luster polish. So if you've got a few of these, they work ideal. I also used, just to darken the edges on some of them, I just used the Versafine Claire with a fine stencil brush to give it a little bit of depth. I painted up quite a few of these and now I've got them ready to use as and when. I also stamped up one of our clockwork stamps and just cut that out. That's just on a piece of card. So I've got some watercolour card here that I've just cut down or you can use a tag. Or you can use a, a smaller card, whatever size you like. It's just the technique today that I wanted to really go through with you. So the colours I've chosen are Chestnut Bay and Spring Moss. So just remember to give those a good shake because you've got the mica at the bottom here that settles. So give those a shake before spraying. And then we're going to just pop that down like so. And also... Now we can add a little bit of water to that. And I'm going to dry that off. Okay, so I don't know whether you can see that lovely mica there that's come through, but that looks fabulous. We want it to look sort of ideally a little bit vintagey. So I've got some stamps here that will give us some nice textures for the background. These are our steampunk words and I'm going to ink up in the twilight. So I'm going to stamp off first and then Just start working my way around the edge of the card. And then I'm changing on to the textured stamp. This is the honeycomb one. And again, I'm inking up in the Versafine Claire. And this is the Twilight. Now I'm not going to stamp off with this one. I'm just going to pop that around the edge. Again, just another layer of texture. And then I've got one of my cogs here from our previous collection and I'm going to just 
stamp a few of those about smaller one there and you can see that's really nicely coming together now I am going to go around the edge with one of the stencil brushes just to give a little bit more depth So I've mixed it up a bit. I'm using the um, the blue atoll, and I've also used the midnight blue as well. And just by darkening the edges there, it's made all the difference again. Really does give it that sort of distressed look. Let's put that to the side a minute, and I'm going to spray the mists over the top of the clock as well. Let's pop that to the side to dry. And now let's have a look what we've got here with the, the cogs that I did earlier. Now it's a little bit of trial and error how you where where you place the cogs really so it might take a couple of times just repositioning them till you feel it's right that's come up really nice with that mica on which will look great stuck down on top i think first of all we're going to use the gilding glue to go around the edge along with the metallic gilding flakes so I'm just using a spongy because I always get in such a mess with this. End up using my finger and then get it everywhere. So Going around the very edge. And as you know, with the gilding glue, you just leave it to dry until it's tacky and completely clear, and then we can add the flakes. Okay the lid on now before I knock it over. Pop that to the side and let's just speed things up a bit and dry this down. So when it's completely clear and tacky it's perfect for the gilding flakes. So I'm going to pinch some of these and then just go around the edge. There's never a perfect way to do this because they are a little fly away as I'm sure that you know and can be a little bit tricky sometimes getting it off your fingers. But the effect that it gives is all worth it. And 
And this one, this is a nice one because it's got some really nice vintage colours in that. This is Glamour. So it's got some of those bronzes, the coppers, even the turquoise, all in. So it gives a really nice effect. I don't know whether you can see that now on the camera, but I think that looks fab. And with the clock there as well, gives you a really nice effect. And now we can think about where we want to place these. So as I say, have a play around first, see which ones you want to go where. Okay, so something like that is fine. I'm going to glue that down now. Don't worry if you get glue coming out the sides, it all dries clear, so that's certainly not a concern for me. And there's the last one. So just remembering to keep press that down, give it a couple of minutes, it doesn't actually take that long to dry off. So in the meantime, I've got some of our sheer paper here and I thought that would be quite nice over the top with some kind of pattern on there as well. So pop a couple of colours on. So I'm going to start with the Sahara and I've got the truffle here as well. So you want to get it sort of looking, a, having a vintage feel. We want to stick to the same colours that we've used in the tags, just for some continuity. here as well which I think was would be quite nice sort of has a bit of a vintage feel and I've got the warm breeze so I'm going to take the medium sized stencil and stencil brush should I say and then just go over the top of that And I'm going to bring in a little bit of the twilight and our smaller stencil brush just to get a little bit of depth on the edges. Let's have a look and see. Yeah. So that's worked well on the sheer paper. That's quite nice. Now I've got some stickers here. I'm going to pop some stickers down over the top.
corner there. Okay, let's have a quick look over the top there. That works quite nicely. I think I will pop something just down the side there. There's just enough room. So let's put Okay, so we've nearly finished now. Now this this is new in here. It comes in a little case like this and it's got some eyelets already in. Now, you guys, you probably know all about these. They've been around forever. We are memory keepers. They, they brought so many nice, wonderful, different gadgets out. And the eyelets that they've got are just stunning. Now, as I say, you guys, you've probably worked with them. I haven't, um, but I did try them the other day and I got quite excited about them. I must say, I really, really enjoy working with them. It's just that nice little add-on at the end, which makes all the difference. So I am going to use that right now. Now I know that there are measurements along the side here as well. I've not actually worked out how to do those yet, but I will do. But for now, I just want to get an eyelet on. And I think I've got this one here, which I think works well with the colours. I'll pop that through. And just to show you what other colours we have got, we've got a lovely purple. We've got lots of really nice warm uh, metal colours. So we've got some nice coppers, bronzes, golds, really nice vintage colours, nice set of turquoise and we are getting more and more in. So do check out our website to have a look at the colours. So I've popped that through now and all I need to do is just press down. How easy is that? So there's your little tag on top of your um, tag. Another tag on a tag. But I think it looks really nice being layered as it is. So you'll find these on the website too. As I say, they're just a great accessory. I was a bit unsure initially because they are quite expensive. However, I spoke to a few people and they said they wouldn't be without them. So that um, that convinced me to go ahead and buy them. And I'm glad I have because I won't be without this now. So anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed today's demonstration. I hope it's given you some inspiration to go and have a go yourselves using some of our lovely cogs and just having a bit of fun basically. I know I have. So thanks again for joining me. You take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.